Hi, we're back at Ross Arnett's place at Lindendale. Um, today we're going to uh, do some penetrometer sampling, that's uh, soil compaction sampling from one row across to the other row um, to see sort of what sort of results we get on this farm. Uh, it's, this is a quite a useful indicator. It, it can indicate water holding capacity, uh, water penetration, um, runoff in heavy rain, you know, how much runoff you get. Uh, and also the ease with which tree roots are able to move into the intero. So it's quite an Im important um, measure. In a previous video, we dug a hole in the center of the intero to see how much the roots were coming into the intero. And they were, they were right into the center. So that was, that was pretty good. Uh, but we were interested to see if there was compaction, um, you know, influencing this in the orchard. This is the device. It consists of a, a long spike, about a meter long, uh, with a pressure gauge on it. Uh, so you can adjust the pressure you, you, you uh, apply to it. And uh, it generally goes in a lot easier uh, under moist conditions. So we had quite moist conditions for this. We're doing in different locations, different pressures, and we're measuring the moisture content and, uh, and the depth the, um, the penetrometer goes in at, at, at two different pressures. So um, go for it, Ross. Um, he's going up to 200 uh, P PSI at the moment. So just pushed it in. It's got a little gauge there. He marks with his hand how far it's coming. And uh, what's that look like? We've gone in at about two seven, uh, 170. About 170. That's in the tree line. So we're doing... Uh, this particular time we're doing every metre across the road. It's 10 metre rows just to um, see what it, how it goes across the row. Uh, so we're, we'll continue doing that. We're doing it at 200 PSI and 300 PSI. So, um, and then we're doing a couple at 400 um, just to see how far they go down. So what's that one? That's 180. That's about 180. So the moisture, according to our meter, is about around the 40 mark at the moment. Um, so it's very wet here, um, but not as wet as it has been. But we anticipate, you know, we'd expect if it was much drier, we wouldn't be able to push it in as far. So yep. to date, what's that one about? 150. 150. So it's gone down a bit. So we're moving into the row where there's probably a little bit of compaction from from the 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 vehicles the mower and and whatever traveling up and down and the harvester so but it does vary a lot um from one joint one to another so that one looks like it's a bit deeper so we're up to about 200 there 180 180 yeah and um do another one So it's a bit less there. About 150. About 150. And uh, in the middle, in the middle here, Ross has been doing cover crops for a number of years. It may be a bit softer, but might, might, you know, it's hard to tell. So it looks like it's going in a bit further. Um, quite a bit further, actually. So. It's about 220. That's down to 220. Um, so that's quite a big difference there. So he's had a lot of cover crops in here. And as you can see, he's just planted another one, uh, much later than he would have preferred, but uh, it's because of the, the wet uh, and the delayed harvest, etc. But it's probably planted about two, two to three weeks ago. That's right. Yep. And uh, as you can see, there's quite a lot of different seed come up there. We've got some brassicas, we've got some buckwheat, we've got... Um, what Celia. else? Facelia there, and we've got some vetch, yeah. some yeah. little bit of vetch there. Brassica. Some brassicas. Facelia. Facelia. Buckwheat. Buckwheat. Uh, looks like Dunfield pea. Oh, Dunfield pea. Yep. All brassica. And have you got some oats or anything in there? Uh, yeah, there, there's either oats, wheat, or barley. Yep, right. Uh, we've and also got some clovers and mustard, which probably. Hard to see at the moment. Yep. 
things have been a bit slow off the mark but he because of the high moisture content he has got a very good strike here and he has actually planted into this side part as well it's not so easy to see at the moment but uh there it's got quite a lot of competition in the and and he's done a four meter 4 strip 4.5 meter strip of cover crop here uh, so we'll see how it comes up in the side areas um, but as you can see we've got a pretty good strike and in a, in a few weeks time I think this is going to be looking great normally he would have done this planted a month earlier or so so it would be much more developed by this time under normal circumstances but we're pretty happy with it at the moment here you can see a bit of lucerne that's come up from a a previous uh, planting and uh, there he has been trying to get on top of the cobbler's pegs he's had a lot of cobbler's pegs pegs here and we don't seem to have as nearly as much cobbler's pegs coming up um, I'll just zoom around to the other parts of the orchard you can maybe see the little faint uh, signs of the of the the cover crop particularly the buckwheat just sticking its head up through those rows okay this is the, some results just a, a few sites uh, from Ross's place um, and you can see on the left hand side we have the the scale there's 100 200 300 uh, millimeters uh, that we're measuring what I've done is I've turned the um, the table upside down um, and you can see that there's more penetration along the tree line so this represents um, going across the row of course um, so and we do have a little bit more penetration in the middle of the row uh, so that's a good sign uh, Ross has been growing uh, cover crops through this center part of the row for a number of years and it looks like it's certainly um, reduced compaction and um, in in that area so that's a great sign um, uh, we do have another crop nearby uh, they're in transition and you can see the results are much more ex extreme we don't have the evenness as what we have at Ross's place so um, there's quite good penetration along the tree lines but in the center of the road the compaction is quite significant um, so uh, I guess the, the this grower is is in transition to to regen and and they are looking at other practices looking at some cover cropping and trying to get more organic matter into their interrow and certainly letting the grasses grow and uh, as much as they can uh, as practically they they can this is about 20 days after the previous picks and um, there's a pretty good strike there a good variety of uh, species have come up um, and they're not as thick as in the side area as in the center part as there's a lot more competition there but uh, it's looking good it's obviously very good soil moisture and uh, we expect this crop to really take off and uh, be a great um, insectary and uh, soil improver we're back at ross's place uh, this is about six weeks after planting uh, so the cover crops looking pretty good um, the the area down the center is obviously doing better than the side sections the side sections had quite a lot of grass on them when it was planted but it is coming up through there all the same um, so what have we got coming up here ross um, how's the different species going okay richard we've got a lot of mustard in the mix there was only uh three percent uh of brassica all together in the mix there was uh, two percent tillage radish and one percent of um, mustard but the mustard's really powered uh, in among them among there you can see there's a whole lot of phacelia that's growing that's that ferny looking one it'll have a purpley blue flower and is very attractive to many insects when it gets to maturity uh, there's also a fair bit of flax that's this one here that's coming or linseed and also 
in here we'll find um, rye corn. That's um, this one here. There's a good example of it starting to get a head on it there. And there's a number of uh, different, uh, well, there's a two, two new clovers in here. There's an arrow leaf and a Persian clover. There's also a bit of vetch and a lot of buckwheat was um, dominant early on, but it's kind of been uh, swamped by all, the, all this new growth. Here's a bit of buckwheat here with at flowering. So I'm, I'm assuming there'll be more buckwheat self seeds itself quite well in that process of um, as it regenerates itself through the through the season. Um, That's looking great. So, oh, this is the um, the mustard starting to flower here. That's right. Yeah. So we might get some aphids on that, which would be good for us to breed some beneficials. Um, but um, no sign at this stage. Now it's very low numbers of insects throughout the whole district. I think from the the uh, severe con conditions we had early in the year with the floods and that. Even even here where where this mustard's in flower, there's there's not even a, a, I can't even see an insect at all feeding there at the moment. Mm, I just saw something fly off, off. but yes, typically we would see native bees. Lots. Hoverflies. There's um, one hoverfly just down there. Yeah, yeah. So we think that the big deluge uh, around here really suppressed a lot of insects, pests and beneficials um, earlier in the year and crops haven't really recovered from that at this stage. So you can see looking down the row, um, we go off into the distance. It's, it's going to be great. In a few weeks time this will all be flowering and uh you know to, ideally we this would have been planted considerably earlier and it would have been you know preferably flowering you know a month ago leading up to the flowering of the macadamias but the macadamias are moving into full flower now as well so uh, we hope there's not too much competition there uh, and anyway we'll look at that to just see how many uh, bees and pollinators are in the inter-row versus the trees but um, looking through the orchard there you can see all the other rows so um, you've got a uh, quite a mix mixture of uh, seeds here in your blend and um, you um, want that to these plants to interact uh, yeah, so I'm looking for nutrient cycling to take place here. So each different family here will have its own select biology that will work with their root system. And they will trade with each other and also with the macadamia roots that actually extend right out through the, the middle of the rows here. I've always uh, fertilised or put my compost out across the whole orchard floor because I'm trying to get, get the whole... whole um, process working across the whole orchard floor so everything gets nutrition and it helps the whole cycle between each of the plants that's great ross looking great anyway we'll sign off there and uh, we'll see you next time thank you this is uh, mid-september as you can see there's some flowers forming the, the cover crops grown quite a lot and uh looking really good and this is uh, near the end of September where we're, we're in full flower. Uh, the crop is very much dominated by, by brassicas so some of the other species haven't done so well. But there's still um, other species and lots of activity now. The uh, bees are out, there's a lot more hoverflies and lacewings are really taken off as well.